Hey everyone, welcome to Aurora Graphics. My name's Grant Dorsey, and I noticed that a lot of the, the clicks that we're getting on the videos that we're making are surrounding the print cut tutorial stuff that we're doing. So I thought I would do another quick tutorial starting with the vector. Uh, last time, if you haven't seen those videos, I'll put a link in the description so you can go check them out. But last time we went through the steps to go from a print image to a print cut image, and now I'd like to start with the vector and show you how you can apply print effects to the vector and then get it back in here and get it lined up so it will cut correctly. And uh, adding the bleed is something that we're gonna go over in this. There's a couple of different ways that you can do that in Photoshop, so let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do here is just type out a quick set of text. Uh, sometimes your customers may bring you a logo that's in a vector format already, or you may be required to create a vector logo form. So if you have to start from scratch, these would be the steps that you would need to do in order to get this ready to be a cut contour. Pull up my fill stroke editor and my design central. Okay, one thing to remember whenever you're going to make a print cut set of text is the thicker the text is, uh, the easier it's going to see your print effects, as well as the, the longer that the text will stay stuck to the vehicle. If you make really, really thin line text that prints and cuts, obviously the, the thinner the, the text, the less likely it is to stay stuck to the vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and just use a, a real blocky font here. And if I select this text and click edit, copy, and then edit, paste, I can ensure that I have the exact same size font if that's what you're looking for. If you need the same font and the exact same size, instead of messing around with trying to get it to default to what you had at the last time, just go ahead and make a copy of it. Uh, you can grab your text tool again here and we'll just uh, change this verbiage. And so now I can sweep select both of these and we'll get rid of the wireframe. If you leave this a wireframe vector and then try to go to Photoshop, it's only going to recognize like a 20% opac opacity single row of pixels and you can't select it or even see it in there. So it's best to go ahead with a solid fill. And now that we've got them both selected, I'm going to align both centers, or at least the vertical center. I can move this up just a bit. Um, if you wanted to add some effects to this uh, through distorting it in, in here, you can change this distortion to be really whatever you want. So you could really get a nice arc to it or increase the height like this or decrease it to get less distortion per letter. I think for this demonstration though, we're just going to, uh, to leave it straight. The next thing I'm gonna do is convert this to uh, outlines. This is gonna be a necessary step in order to create a cut contour for your graphic here. So we'll convert it to outlines and then I'm gonna make a compound out of it. And the next step we wanna do is make sure that this is the correct size that we wanna actually do our cutting at. And so let's say you needed a, you know, a 30 inch decal to go on a front door. You just simply type the 30 inches in here and that's going to be your finished cut size. And now we will export this save it to my desktop and I'm saving it as an EPS uh, an EPS is a really versatile format so it's great for jumping back and forth it also doesn't lose any file information so on the desktop here I'll just click my EPS file and now if you notice it's defaulting to the correct width now what we need to decide is what resolution we want to print at and you can because this is a small decal, you could go to 300 DPI if you felt like it. It's really kind of unnecessary, but um, if you want very, very crisp print, you can, you can go up as high as the, your computer will let you. So I'm just gonna do this one at 150 and click OK. And so now we've got our, our text in here. And uh, the thing to remember here is that the outside edge of this text is exactly where the knife is gonna fall. And so in order to make a bleed, we're going to have to increase the canvas size because right here at the top of the S, the bleed would actually fall off the edge of the canvas. So under image, or excuse me, under image canvas size, we're just going to increase this by a couple inches because we don't need a huge bleed. 
And you notice that I made sure that it, it expanded from the center out. You want this dead center in the middle of your document. That way it'll line up easily with your cut contour when we go back. So now it's as simple as opening up a fill or adding your print effects using layer styles or whatever you'd like to do. Um, I'm going to show you how to get a fill in here. So we'll just grab our brushed aluminum. I'm going to mouse over Photoshop and then drop it in here. We'll select all, edit copy, and then file close. And that way it gets rid of our original and now we're just working with this copy. Control V to paste. And I just held alternate and rolled my, my scroll wheel back to zoom out there. And I'm going to shrink this till we get most of the brushed aluminum on there. And now I'm going to hold down control. You can see I got that little box next to my hand over here in the layers palette. And then if I click this picture, it's going to load selection on that exact area. And now while I'm on the brushed aluminum layer, I can click a layer mask like this. You'll notice if I stay moused over it, it says add vector mask. And so what it actually has nothing to do with a vector. They just call it that. It's, it's more of a layer mask. And so now what we can do is, is add effects to this layer. By double clicking it, you can pull up the layer style box like this. And uh, we can add a, a bevel emboss. And if you need to see more, here, I'm going to hit escape here and go full screen. That way um, you can see exactly what our bevel emboss is doing. The farther zoomed out you are, the less accurate it's going to show you exactly what you're getting for your bevel emboss. So it's best to zoom in to about 100% to be able to see what you're getting. So I'll double click my layer, add a bevel emboss, and I'm going to uncheck use global light. You see my shadow starts to, or the light source is coming from the left, so my shadow's on the right. And we can just play with this if you want to increase how deep it is. The depth actually is sharpens the bevel and softens it. And you can also soften the edges a little more gently with the soften tool. So I think that bevel looks pretty decent there. We'll go ahead and give it a chiseled edge because it is a towing company. And the next thing to think about here is where our bleed is going to be. Because if we zoom in a little bit more and I control click this layer, that's our cut file, remember. And so you notice it's actually going clear to the very edge of the print. And if you try to print cut this, if it's off by just a tiny little bit, you're going to end up with a wide edge up here. And so in order to avoid that, there's a couple of things we can do. If you wanted this brushed aluminum to go all the way to the outside, what we would do is delete this layer mask. We'll go ahead and since we've got the cut contour selected, now what we can do is select, modify, and expand. And we only need to give it a, you know, a, a pixel or two bleed, and that'll be plenty. So I'm going to go with two pixel bleed, and you'll see it stepped out two pixels. And so now when I add my layer mask to this layer, and then we reselect the original cut line, you can see that it's actually going to cut inside there. And so now we've stepped out our selection and added the layer mask in a, in a larger surface area. So now this would be ready to save out as a JPEG, bring back into Flexi and line up with the cut contour, which we'll do that here in a second. The other way to do this, we'll just control click here, add another layer mask. The other way is if you wanted to add a stroke to this file, and I'm going to go ahead and reselect this layer so you can see this happen with the, the dialog box up. We'll double click our effects, Go down to stroke and if you notice it's wanting to step the stroke to the outside of the cut and that means it's going to cut the stroke off most everywhere except for maybe right here on this edge so what we want to do is is switch our stroke from outside to the center and so now our stroke should be bisected by our cut line and uh, if you want to increase the size you can simply highlight that and use your scroll wheel to to gain a, a larger stroke now, if you notice, it's making the, the stroke lighter out here. That actually can be fixed by taking the stroke off of the layer, but um, we, we've done that in another video here. I'll link that in the description below. And 
that way your stroke isn't affected by the bevel because the bevel is actually adding a little bit of white right there towards the edge. If we, uh, if we turn off our stroke, you can see that's where the bevel begins. And so it's adding a little bit of white over the top of the stroke. You can see it's over the top of the stroke in the layers palette. That's how you know it's gonna happen like that. It's also adding black to the red stroke underneath here. So if you wanted to have a true red stroke, well here, let's just do it. I'm gonna right click this and click create layers. Now you notice our red stroke is down below some of the stuff. I'm gonna move it up above just like this. So I just moved the red stroke up and now we've got a solid stroke there. Uh, that also got rid of the adjustment for my layer styles. So you have to, if you're gonna create a layer from your layer styles like that, make sure you're happy with what results you have because you can't go back and manipulate it later. So the next step is going to be for us to save this as a JPEG and then bring it back into Flexi and line up the cut contour. So let's go ahead and do that. And I, as you can tell, I already did this and didn't hit the record button. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a JPEG. And I'm just gonna leave this open if there was any chance that you were gonna need to, to start over with this or, or make any changes rather than starting over, go ahead and save a copy of this as a Photoshop document and then you'll be able to come back and play with it later. Okay, so now we're back in Flexi. What we need to do is import our print file. So I'm gonna go to the print file and click import. And because this was already on the screen before, this image right here is actually in front of it. So in order to get it to where we can line up the vector perfectly on top of the stroke, we're gonna go ahead and go order and send it to the back. The next thing we need to do is select this. And you remember, we've already made it a compound and it's not a group. That way we can now make it a cut contour. So under arrange, cut contour, click make cut contour. If you click away, it should be in, uh, show up as a gray line if it's actually a cut contour. So the next thing we're gonna do is hit sweep select the two images, hit control five, and it should align them perfectly on both centers. And so what we're gonna do is come in here and double check to make sure that's the case. And if you see our gray line is actually sagging down just barely, um, I'm just gonna nudge it up just a little bit select it and just bump it up. I know it's probably impossible for you to see, but I can barely see it. And now that we've got it centered up on the actual image, it's ready to go. We may uh, step out here and check each both ends. That looks perfect. Come down here and check this. That looks perfect. Check the G. That looks perfect. Okay, and since we went all the way around the outside checking up and down on all the letters and it looks good, we shouldn't have to check every single letter in the center. And so the next step is gonna be to sweep select both of these and group them together. That way they can't move. They're, they're not gonna do any shifting around. And then we're going to export them. Now you can do this as an EPS or a PDF or, or whatever file will actually retain the information from the cut contour. I would suggest the, the EPS file. And so you can notice I've already actually exported this. Like I said, I didn't have the video recording. So uh, we just added the word print cut ready to the, the text. And that way you can differentiate between the original print file, the cut contour that you were messing with, and also the print file. So we'll just click save. Yes, I want to replace it. And the only thing to do from here is to take it into VersaWorks and essentially follow the same steps that we did in our other print cut tutorial where we started with a print image. And uh, again, I'll link those in the, in the below section so that you can check that out. If you like this, please hit like and subscribe. And if you'd like to get notifications through YouTube when we post a new video, go ahead and hit the bell and that'll automatically alert you whenever we post a new one. But thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you next time.